Hey everyone, Ryan here from Next Level Property Investing. I hope you're well. Just before we get started, if you're a property entrepreneur and you want to get as much value as you possibly can from my channel, please don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell notification below, and make sure you get notified every time I launch a video. If you're really serious about your game and you want to learn how to build a property business, then head over to nextlevelpropertyinvestor.com, nextlevelpropertyinvesting.com, I should say, and have a look at our six-figure property investor mentorship. Book a call myself and we can see if it's a good fit for you. So let's dive into the video. Today I wanna to talk about a property business. Now, time and time again I see it, you know, people teaching strategies, people, you know, showing people how to do service accommodation, showing them how to set HMO up, but not really building a property business. Now I got into this because I wanted the business, not because I wanted the hobby. Um, I actually got into it because I didn't have a pension at the start. So I thought I need to create some cash flow, something that's gonna pay me while I sleep and something that I don't really need to work too hard at later in life and obviously it'll pay me um, an income whilst I enjoy my later years. So that's kind of where my journey started. But as it's developed, I've realized that this is a serious game and there's serious money in it. And if you treat it like a proper business, then you can make some really good inroads, you can create some passive income for yourself, and you know you can have a very successful business in quite a short space of time with a bit of hard work. So the thing that frustrates me the most is that people think it's a hobby. Uh, don't get me wrong, most people need to start around their current job, which is fine. But don't treat it like a hobby. You know, it's not like going to play Sunday league football. You know, this is a serious game that you can lose serious money if you don't do it correctly. Um, you've got to know how to do do good due diligence, and you've got to be business minded. You've got to be commercial savvy. Now, there's many different parts to any business. You know, you ask any any successful businessman, there's many different parts. Any successful businesswoman, there's many different elements to their businesses. Now, why don't property investors, you know, operate on the same mindset? <clears throat> I don't know, but one thing I do is, I, you know, in my consultancy is I teach how to set up a business. I don't focus on how to set up a strategy. I focus on how to build a property business that's sustainable for the long term. And I think this is a massive, massive, massive point that I need to hammer home. You know, not enough businesses in the property world do marketing. They think that the estate agents are going to give them everything. They think that posting the gum tree ad is going to get them everything. They think that going searching on that open rent is going to build a business. You know, if you want to scale a property business, you have to be able to generate leads on tap. If you want to scale to seven, eight figure property portfolios, you've got to be able to build the relationships, find the money, find the deals that make a difference and help you scale to those numbers. You cannot do that by just logging on to open rent and sending a few messages. You know, you cannot do it by just making a few estate agent calls per day, you know? And some people don't even do that. You know, you've got to have a robust marketing plan to your business. And that's one of the major fundamentals that I see most property hobbies or property, um, property investors, whatever you kind of want to call yourselves, um, you know, do and, and I want to change that mold and that's why I do my consultancy. You know, my uh, six figure property investor program is not about teaching you a strategy. It's about building a property business. It's about building a business. Property is just my niche. Business is what I consult on, but property is just my niche. But within that niche, we've got service accommodation, we've got HMOs, we've got buy, refurbish, refinance, we've got lease options, you know, we've got single lets in there. And everything there is all about creating multiple revenue streams for cash flow. We then break it out even further. We've got managed elements of the property business. You know, for me, that's managed service accommodation. For some people, it's managed single lets and managed HMOs. You know, I then break it down even further. And because I've got systems and processes in place for every element of my business, it becomes easy to break it down further, offering out cleaning and linen services, offer out project management services, offer, offering out, you know, full refurbishment services. You know, all of these are just different revenue streams that bolt on the simple processes that when you know what you're doing and you put them into your business, you can scale your business at ease. You know, once you've got the systems and processes in place, scaling is, is the easy part, but you just double down on the efforts of the marketing pump more leads into the system, the leads get converted to the sales channels, and then the operation and the delivery channel take that off, you know? And it's one of the core fundamentals of setting a business up is having these departments in line and having the processes around them. Now, I didn't have this, you know? I built 21 properties in seven months, um, acquired a lot of property, it was great, I was selling, I was out there, I was building the relationships and everything was going well. But 
I didn't think about the operations. I didn't think about the delivery of the products. You know, how would we get these set up? How would we deliver it to the guests? How would we get them online to make sure we're advertised? How would we get tenants checked in properly and make sure we're ticking all the boxes to stay legal? And subsequently, I got dragged into the operations and I didn't acquire anything for three months after that. So I then had to take a step back and figure out the delivery in the operation side of the business, put systems and processes around it. That in, in an ideal world, I like software and I like to keep it as automated as possible, but I do have some great, you know, 18 players in my, in my team and you know, they, they help my business tick in, in all departments, but each department has their own little silo. And those silos have processes, systems and software wrapped around them and good people. And then that allows us to scale. And it means the next time that I went around, I acquired then 40 properties in six months. That just plugged into the system, it plugged into the model and it ran like a dream. And we continue to push hard, you know, I continue to push hard with acquisitions and I continue to focus on acquisitions rather than focus on the operations. And for me, that is the key fundamental to scale in the property business quickly. But you have to market your business. You have to be able to generate leads. You have to be able to generate relationships. You've got to be able to create conversations with people. And if you don't know how to do that, and you don't have systems and processes around that, then you're always gonna be fighting fires. You're always gonna be picking up the scraps. You're always gonna be, you know, doing what everyone else is doing. You know, you gotta think outside the box. You don't wanna be picking the scraps up. You wanna be leading the game. You wanna be getting the lion's share of the good deals. And you do that by having a good system around your marketing. So start thinking a bit differently about how you want to get into property. You know, if you're at your beginning of your journey, do you want it to just be a hobby? Because for me, if it's a hobby, it's gonna do one or two things. It's either gonna lose money, or you're gonna get sick, up, sick, sick of it, and you'll get fed up because you'll not have systems and processes in place, so the hassle will end up making you just wanna get out and you'll exit, you know, or you'll stay small. And you know, at the end of the day, I got into this because it's a business. Most people I coach and most people I speak to and most people that I network with get into this for a business, for a lifestyle change, to create freedom in their life, to create time freedom in their life, money freedom, allow them to do what they want, when they want. You can't do that if you treat it like a hobby. So that's the first mindset shift that you need to get over. Once you get over that mindset shift, then you start thinking like a business. So, you know, you don't need a business plan. You just need a business process for each element of the business that you're gonna run. So set those processes up, figure out what those processes need to be, you know, from acquisitions all the way through to the delivery of the product and then scalability. So have a good think about how you want to do it. Uh, for me, um, you know, it's, it's all about the, the, the each, each silo has different systems. Um, so our, it all starts with the marketing. So awareness, we've got to get awareness on the brand. We've got to get awareness on the company and we've got to get awareness on our products. Now the products that I offer, uh, you know, our SA management service, our uh, rent guarantee service, you know, our lease options, our quick sale, um, you know, and then the products that we then offer from then, um, are our clean and linen service, our project management. So we've got to get awareness around that. We've got to get awareness around the company. We've got to build trust. People have got to trust that we know what we're doing. And that's that's point number one. You've got to get yourself omnipresent. So people need to know, you know, they need to see you all the time. You need to be out there. You've got to be using all the different channels to make sure that your brand is out there and you're getting awareness. From the awareness comes the lead generation. And then with that lead generation, that then pumps the sales department. For us, sales department is acquisitions. So without leads, we can't acquire. You know, without um, you know, the research, without you know, the relationship building, without getting the deals off the estate agents, without getting the deals direct to landlords and vendors, we haven't got the acquisition part of the business. So awareness, lead generation, then we're going to the acquisitions. And then it's all about closing strategies. So, you know, we want to improve our closing ratios. We want to make sure that our viewing to completed sales ratios are high. We want to make sure that our scheduled viewings to actual live viewings is a high percentage, you know. Make sure that we're making offers on nearly every viewing that we're going on. And then obviously following that process up through. So that's a separate little system in itself. From that, we move to the um, delivery of that. So how do we then get those properties set up? How do we get them funded? How do we get them advertised? And then from that, it's the operational side of running those properties. So how do we host guests from start to finish? How do we onboard a tenant and make sure they check in and check out successfully, you know, and legally? You know, a, good, a big point that a lot of people miss. How do we make sure that we're complying? How do we make sure that we've got all the right licenses in place? You know, how do we make sure that we're, we're protecting all the deposits and all that sort of operational stuff. And then on the back end of that, you've got your, your numbers, you know, how do we track the numbers? How do we make sure we're making money? How do we, you know, measure proper KPIs to move that business needle forward? If you're not measuring your business, if you don't know your numbers, you know, if you can't measure it, you can't change it. It's as simple as that because you don't know what to change. Every single part of my business, each department has 
strict KPIs and we measure the KPIs on a weekly basis. So as you can start to see, property isn't just a strategy. Property is a business. And if you want to build a successful business, you've got to think of property like a business. And you know, I cannot, I cannot stress this. It's what I go over time and time and time again. Um, you know, with all my clients, and it's a huge mindset shift from the norm that's out there getting taught of you need to learn this strategy and it's going to make you loads of money, or you know, you need to learn this strategy and it's going to learn you loads of money. But they don't teach you about all the different elements around that strategy to make that strategy a business. Now, you can stick to one strategy. You know, you could just nail down on HMOs as your strategy. H rent to rent HMOs is your strategy. But you either treat it like a hobby and you pick a few up and you muster on through and you do all the work and the hassle and the phone calls and you're a bit scattergun and you're not really sure what you're doing. Or you pick that as your strategy and then you build a business around it. So how do you create awareness around the strategy? How do you create leads around the strategy? You know, how do you then deliver the acquisitions and acquire the acquisitions? You know, how do you then um, deliver the product? So how do you get it set up? What are you gonna set it up like? How do you attract your tenants? How do you then run the tenants? And then how do you track your numbers? You know, so every single strategy has a business, but it's not just about learning the strategy. And when you start thinking like this, you'll start to create a successful business that will create your time freedom, will create your financial freedom, and you know, the world is endless because you can scale. You know, you can scale on that and you can take the business as far as you want, you know, or you could build it up and sell it. You could, you know, build it to a level that you're comfortable with and stop and retire. Whatever you see fit. The choice is yours. But when you know the key fundamentals of business, and you wrap it into a strategy, or you wrap the strategy around the business wraps around the strategy, then you're on for success. I hope this helps. Don't forget to subscribe. Obviously, I'm dropping videos all the time. And as I said, head over to nextlevelpropertyinvesting.com. If you want to understand how I can consult for your business, help you create a business around your strategy, book a call with myself. We'll see if we're a good fit. Have an awesome day, everyone.